Astronomers at the University of New South Wales in Australia have discovered a habitable planet called Wolf 1061. Cool name. Um, but more importantly, it's the nearest habitable planet ever discovered. Uh, we've, you know, talked a lot on the lip, Jose, about planets that are way, way out there. But this one, get this, is only 14 light years away. Neighbors. <laughs> Weekly. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it's this world that we found is uh, apparently in the Goldilocks zone, right, in that perfectly uh, not too cold, not too warm area of the solar system it's in. Um, it's, it's surrounded by another star. I mean, it's, it's three planets that are surrounding one star is what I'm trying to say. Um, but all of these planets actually potential, have the potential to be solid and rocky. Uh, this one uh, specifically um, is, is deemed like the most habitable of these three planets that we've, we've discovered. You know, 14 light years, that is very, very far, but at the same time, compared to others, is it close? it's pretty close. And you know, yeah, probably, you know, in a few weeks we'll be talking about another planet that, that we found, but I think this really highlights something, and, and it's, it's like aliens, if we're, if we're going to get into that. Other life, um, intelligent or not, doesn't matter, may actually be much closer than we thought. Yeah, and I think, I think it's, it's about time that we find uh, something that is most likely that we are not alone in this universe as, yeah. the, as an intelligent or, like you said, non-intelligent life, but this probably life. I love the fact that we're finding so many planets so often and that we're opening up the literally the universe of possibilities of what the future of, of, of human existence could be. We know that the first uh, step is Mars, and that's, that's where all the efforts are, are being focused on. But the fact that they're trying to find a replacement for Earth, I think that's very, very exciting. Now, I'm afraid if we go to another planet, then we just trash it the same way we did with this. Well, yeah, that's why we're going to go there in the yeah. first place, is why we're going to look for a new home. Hopefully, it won't get to that point. Let's stay positive, Jose. Um, but anyways, uh, this is very similar to Earth, this place. But at the same time, though, it would not be the most pleasant place to live. Let me give you some facts about it. Um, the gravity is something like 1.8 times that of Earth's, because so it's, we'll be it's larger. Shorter, it'll everyone? be much shorter, yeah, yeah. And let's say, you know, if, if, if humans were to go there, we would have to have special suits. Otherwise, we'd, we'd you know, get scrunched up like... No basketball. Like a, <laughs> no, good point though. Um, again, uh, another one, it's tidally locked, meaning the same uh, side always faces the sun. It doesn't rotate uh, on its axis the way that Earth does. Um, that means one side is very warm, the other side is probably freezing. But there is that one area um, at the top where, you know, it's, it's like teeter-tottering te teeter on the edges of both. So it's actually, that could be the most habitable part of that planet. So And we know humans it, can adapt to that type of sown like in the in the northern latitudes where we have super long days sometimes you know most of the 24 hour period mm -hmm. is with daylight or in the other half of the year is mostly night so it wouldn't be that foreign to humans so i did some math mm -hmm. for once in my life and i i figured out that um, with the technology now that we have given the shuttles that we use now or at least we used um it would take get this to go 14 light years 520,800 years, so it would only take half a million years to get there with the technology we have. Uh, so hopefully we don't screw our Earth up too bad while uh, too soon because then we won't be able to get the hell out of here and find these planets that are very far away. <laughs> the only cool thing about that number is that it, it supports this idea that the, when we decide to move into other planets or go into other galaxies, it will have to be a multi-generational thing. Yeah. These, these missions have to be planned in such a way that there is like five or six generations that, you know, exist in the mission lifetime. I, yeah. I think that's really interesting as well. Yeah. Um, so much closer than we previously thought um, in regards to other habitable planets. But, um, you know, this is important because you, we, we've seen people from NASA come out, for example, and say, you know what? In our generation, uh, in all of our lifetimes, we will find uh, alien life. I'm not talking about little green men with flying saucers, probably little green microbes, <laughs> microbial life. Um, so this is just a step forward. Uh, we might not have to be looking as far as we thought, 14 light years, closer than we thought.